Robert, you saw Pacific Rim Uprising, did you not? I sure did see Pacific Rim Uprising, Alex. All right, so uh, did you see the first one? I sure did see the first Pacific Rim. Um, did you I'm, like the first one? I like the first one a lot. I think it's, I feel like it's, you know, the better version of a lot of the latter Transformer films, you know, where the action is is definitely the main part of why you're seeing the film, but the characters don't suck. They're fine, and the action is is prime like it's prime cut action. Like it's it's pretty great. Um, I like the first one a lot. So I was very I don't want to say excited, but I when I heard that there was love for it enough for them to get a sequel, mm-hmm. I was kind of glad because I know it didn't perform very well here. Um, it made most of its money overseas. What a which, shock! Yeah, it makes pretty much the most sense in the world. Um, but I'm I was glad they made a sequel. Then I saw the movie. <laughs> It was and, bad. You know... So it sounds like it sounds like the first one is definitely better. Oh, yeah. But, it's without a shred of doubt better. Okay, so I guess my main question is, since the reason I never saw the first one, or the second one, obviously, for that matter, is aside from robots and stuff crashing around, which I can get in other movies, maybe not Transformers, but just in general, I just didn't see anything appealing about the characters outside of the robots and the monsters. Yeah, it's that it's that issue kind of to the max in this. The yeah. characters are even more stripped down. You know, there's no more, uh, there's no Stacker Pentecost, who is, you know, Idris Elba's character from the first one, who is kind of a badass. Um, you don't have a protagonist that's like really, um, well, I don't know. Maybe the protagonist is kind of on the same level, but you don't have the side characters aren't there. Uh, they do stuff with Charlie Day's character, um, and the other scientist that you know, their friend, he's friends with, played by Bern Gorman. I think his name is Gottlieb in the movie. Um, but you know, they were kind of the comic relief in the first movie, and now they—I won't get into spoilers—but they do something with that relationship. Should and, we just get into spoilers? Because I don't care. Okay, we'll talk about spoilers. So Charlie Day's the villain in the movie. Okay, and it's dumb. It's terrible. It's a horrible horrible idea and and especially because he was the comic relief in the first movie and like he's supposed to be a character you root for and like they corrupt they do a whole corruption plot thing where it's like ah the kaiju the people in the or the the kaiju like big bads in the other dimension like they call them the precursors Mm -hmm. they're like infecting his mind and stuff because he's uh it's it's just not it's, it's a bad part of the movie, if I'm being just blat- blatantly honest. It sucks. So what you're basically saying is what's wrong with Transformers movies, particularly the latter ones, is also a problem here, in a way? In a way. I, w- I would definitely say I w- there are the big issues I have with the latter Transformers films is that I'm just always bored watching them. The action is always just super kind of like nonstop and never really is engaging. And I wasn't really bored watching this. It's just that the stuff that I was watching, it either pissed me off or (laughs) I was just kind of like, oh, okay, this is decent. You know, it's not great. So are the action scenes at least good? Yeah, I actually wanted more action scenes, which is kind of the trailer for this. The trailers for this movie sell a different movie a little bit. Like you think there's going to be a lot of... uh, Jaeger, which is the, the giant, robot, right? giant robots, Jaeger versus Kaiju fights, which there aren't a lot of. But uh, yeah, I thought the trailer implied that it was the Jaeger versus Jaeger fights was the big thing. Well, it's like, it is, it is. I don't know, I didn't feel that way. I th- that At least in the trailers I saw, they were like, they showed all, or at least that's, maybe, maybe I wasn't even paying attention. Maybe I was more fixated on like, yeah, there's some of the Jaeger versus uh, Kaiju fights, and I was like, it's going to be more like Pacific Rim 1. When in fact it's like not it's it it is a lot of those Jaeger versus Jaeger fights which I guess it, it if they showed enough of it in the trailers it I probably just let it slip by me because I didn't really care. See that from what it sounds like you're talking about it seems like this is the problem I think that a lot of action and or larger blockbuster series or franchises kind of run into. If action's your main thing, then just have a lot of that. Yeah, but if if your series just sucks at having good characters, you shouldn't try it, and all of a sudden, you know, add add depth when it's you know it had it didn't really work before. Why is it going to work now? Yeah, there's they. It just it felt like 
I made the comparison in my head to Kingsman 2. It felt like this one did a lot of the same. It relied on a lot of the same pitfalls, which was it tried to world build, you know, and it tried to extend the character scope and all that mess. But uh, it it all ended up drawing focus away from what I'm there to see, which is I want to see robots punch monsters in the face. Like, this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And we don't get really that much of it at all until the end, which I say is probably the best part because the end fight, all the fights, they're all really solid looking. The effects are fine. Yeah. Uh, the choreography's fun. You know, there's some cool, like, use of setting. You know, there's a fight on, like, a giant frozen lake that is neat. Yeah, that, see, that part looked cool in the trailer. Yeah, but the, the they do stuff with the plot where it's like, I know what you're trying to do with this. Just don't do this. Let's just see more fights. Uh, they do it, that, that damn twist with Charlie Day where they make him a villain, and it, it just, it robs the movie of an entire element that I loved in the first movie which was Charlie Day's character. Um, is his acting just awful as a villain? Or is it fine? You know, I... I I'm just saying, it's like, not very good. See, when you say... I, when you, I feel like I don't blame him for it because, like, the fuck? But when you say that he's a villain, it reminds me <laughs> of the the Always Sunny where it's like, oh no, we're in Charlie's bad place where he breaks things. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he has a the little blan- bit. The blanket over his head. Hello. <laughs> It's, just it's like, a little bit. Just, That's why it's so ridiculous, though, because you're like, I don't, I don't see, and that was the that was the case in Pacific Rim One is I don't see anybody else. Like I, Charlie Day's not a Daniel Day Lewis, where it's like, wow, yeah, this guy is a different person. It's like it's Charlie Day, right? But I, I just it felt it it was just wrong. It felt weird and out of place, and it felt like a bad decision. It was a bad creative decision. It didn't pan out. That's the problem. Is I think when. When people don't like the fact that they make something simple, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just an action movie. But you know what? You could make it just action, but have it be really awesome. Like Hard Boiled. Right. There, there's maybe five minutes of dialogue in that movie. Right, right. Hard Boiled is, is... It's just like nonstop shooting, but it's John Woo nonstop shooting, so it's done really well. And it's, right. And it's artfully done. Mm-hmm. And it's like, just be satisfied with what you're good at. Don't try and, you know, don't try and rock the boat. Oh, well, maybe if we have this twist that no one's gonna like, yeah, that that that'll that'll get the audience, that'll win the respect of our peers. And it might it might sound like I'm ripping the movie to shreds, but I'm only really doing that because I enjoyed the first one a lot. No, I, I, I know I just, what you mean. I had super, you know, I at least wanted this to be like, you know, what? Ah, screw the critics. I thought I thought it was a good time, and I I, it's a good time, but it I definitely get why critics don't really, you know, like it. It's it's you know. It tries to do too much. It there, juggles too many subplots and thematic things and sociopolitical things, and I'm like, so, I don't really care about it. So any the of this. main plot is what exactly? Without going into a ridiculous amount of detail. So basic plot. The basic plot is John Boyega is kind of a party boy, mm-hmm. and he's Idris Elba's son from the first movie. So he's like Chris Pontius. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a party boy, pretty much. Yeah, he's yeah, <laughs> but not not as fun. Okay, yeah. So he's like you know kind of a screw up, but uh, kind of reminds me of like what they tried to do, or what they tried, what they did do with Captain Kirk in the first Star Trek, did and succeeded in doing, right. making it better. Um, but it's like you know I don't want to be my dad, all this shit, daddy issue stuff, and he's right. kind of a he's a screw up, and he falls uh, falls in with this other girl who's kind of like a junkyard. All right, orphan. what is, what is the plot? So they're training. Did, did, did you, no, just like what is this? What's the main conflict? Not not a synopsis. There's about three. So the main conflict is these kids trying to figure out how to fight in these Jaegers. There's also a, a conflict involving drones, and it's about well, this Chinese company that's creating Jaegers that aren't. They don't need to be piloted by people anymore. They can be piloted by drones. Okay. And then the movie kind of turns into Charlie Day uses these drones to open a new breach in the ocean, which is basically a rift in space time that is what the first movie's about, where all these monsters climb through. Okay. Um, and that's going to end up, you know, destroying the world, basically, in okay. short. But there's a couple different things this movie's about, and that's the problem. Is like, okay, so the it, first half is about, like, yeah. fight, is about, like, the, you know, John Boyega trying to teach this girl and like the, these other cadets or rangers or whatever like how to fight in these Jaegers and then it's the second half is about them kind of trying to figure out how to save the world 
Um, but there's some other mess in there, like this shit about drones. Like, I'm like, I didn't want to see this. Like, I, this is not what I wanted. Like, it's, uh, it, remind, it reminded me a little bit of, like, uh, Jason Bourne, like, the, the the most recent one where it's like... I didn't see that because I thought it looked bad. Well, it's like, it reminded me of, like, reminded me of that because there's, like, a lot of talk in that about, like, apps and, like, you know, like, social media and, like, spying and stuff. And I'm like, this is not what Jason Bourne is about. This is about, like, Jason Bourne's a man-on-the-run thriller... And you're neglecting that fucking simple premise right now. Right. I think that's what it sounds like the issue here is you can't juggle so many things at once. Yeah, it's it, it spreads itself too thin and it suffers because of it. And it's not as if like any of what they're trying to do is like particularly awful. Like the relation like the coming of age stuff is like it's fine. It's just I've I've seen it before and it's not what I wanted to see in this movie. Um but let me again reiterate that when action is happening, it's very entertaining. Like, there's great action scenes, um, and the effects are really fun, and the choreography is awesome. But I just, I wanted a little bit more of that and a little bit less of the, everything else the movie's trying to spring on you. Okay, so it sounds like I'm, I made the right decision to not go see it. Yeah. What would you give it? I'd give it a soft six. Man, that that is like the harshest soft six out of ten review I've ever heard. And again, I, it's... It's very harsh, but it's because I. The only reason I'm giving it that much more of a, a higher score is because I, again, I like the property a lot. I think it's fun. It's a fun idea. Okay, so this is like like X Men: The Last Stand is a yeah. soft six. Yeah, yeah. It's like or or a three. Because when out of five, right? Because when X Men: The Last Stand is on, I mean, when Magneto's throwing the Golden Gate Bridge around, it's like, yes, this is what I wanted to see. But then when they're killing half the cast, you're like, you're why are you doing this? Uh, you you just yelling at the screen, right? Right. <laughs> it's kind of like that with this. Yeah. And instead of killing Cy- Cyclops, they make Charlie Day the bad guy. Off topic. Speaking of yelling at the screen, mm-hmm. I forgot to mention this. Mm-hmm. So you know, a couple weeks ago we were talking about annoying theater habits. Yeah. When I saw Unsane, anytime someone was getting like stabbed or like hit like their head against something, yeah, this person literally screamed like, "Oh, really?" It was so awkward. I, I mean, like, ah! it's like, calm down. It's just a movie. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, so Pacific Rim was not great. I, uh, I, any, I can't, any closing thoughts? I, I will be there if they make a third one, reluctantly. But I, you know, it makes, these that, movies make me smile. Like when I, when I see, I don't care what, even if the, the movie could be trash. But if there's a scene in the movie where someone is, is taking like a fistful of cars and like throwing them at a monster, it's like, I'm not going to like, you know, be like, no, dumb. I'm gonna be like, yeah. I'm gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> this is a dope ass fucking action scene. But yeah, but it it sounds like if you're gonna have something that's super action packed, mm-hmm. then I guess you don't really need good. You don't really need good characters. Yeah, but it helps to have like some little semblance that you can be like, oh, he's this way or that way. Like Rambo, it's just like he's very very stoic, and he's got his whole like. His baggage. He's seen some shit. Mm-hmm. John McClane's a smartass. It's like, you need one element at least that people can easily identify. And that's what I felt the first one had that this didn't. There okay. Was, there's at yeah. least three characters in there that I liked. All right. So in closing, uh, I can't necessarily send people to go see this. Um, if you're a big fan of the first one, I recommend it. Just on the merits of this being its sequel, um, you'll probably be disappointed. Um, or who knows? You might you might like it. The action's good. The acting's fine. Uh, it just it spreads itself a little bit too thin, and I wish it stuck to its guns and what the whole premise of the franchise was, which was robots fighting monsters. So yeah, six out of ten. 